is Jarvis here back with the last ever ARC lesson of the year. I can't believe we've got here. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And today we're going to be looking at hope that inspires change. And when we have hope, high hope levels for the world around us and for our own lives, then when we see things that aren't right or are, are unfair or are unjust in the world around us, it gives us hope that something can change. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So I'm just going to ask you a question. If you could change anything in the world, what would it be? Just have a little thing. You can pause it here if you want to. So I wonder what kind of change you would want to see in the world. We all look around, don't we, and see things that aren't quite as they should be. And that's partly why we've written and run out the ARC curriculum to make sure that children and the children in St James are growing up able to flourish into all that you've been made to be. And But change starts with us, which is why in the ARC curriculum, We've been doing lots of things that focus on changing on the inside, because when we change on the inside, we can then bring change to the world around us. And I love this um, phrase that says transformed people can transform the world around us and transform means to change. So when we change on the inside, we can bring change to the world around us. So it's important that we look in the mirror first at us and that's what we've been doing throughout this art curriculum. So we've looked at things like making healthy connections and we've talked about those four connections that we need to make in order to flourish and do well in life. A connection with ourselves, knowing how we're made, who we are and loving that. Making healthy connections with other people, so seeing people in a good light, pulling out the gold in them, honouring and loving them well, and making healthy connections with the world around us, so looking after this world that we've been given and making healthy connections with God. The other thing that we've looked at is loving the one in front, particularly through the acts of random kindness that we've encouraged you to do, and looking at encouraging other people and being um, loving to other people. That is really important. If we're gonna love the world around us and make a difference, we need to be able to love other people well. Forgiving those who hurt us. Now, the reason that we looked at that was because what's inside of us leaks out. And when we hold on to things like anger and unforgiveness, it can make us all bitter and yucky on the inside. And then what we spread out to the world around us or leak out is yucky and no one wants to do that. So that's why we gave you all those tools to put in your tool belt for life last term to help you to manage the things that are inside, to deal with the yucky things and get them out so that what you're leaking to the world around you is good stuff. We've learned that we can clean up our mess when we make a mistake, so we don't need to give up on things because we mess up. We can clean up our mess when we need to, and we can start again. We've learnt the importance of standing up for what's right, and we're going to be looking a little bit more about that um, this lesson. Having an attitude of gratitude. I don't know about you, but sometimes I can be around people and they're really grumpy and they're really complaining, and I've been like that sometimes too. And then you end up feeling grumpy and complaining because the grumping and the complaining has leaked out onto you. Whereas people who have an attitude of gratitude and are thankful for what they've got, even maybe when things aren't going so well, that catches too. And then that pours out really positive stuff around. So that's why it's important to develop that attitude of gratitude because that makes a difference to how you view life and then what you leak to the world around you. We've talked about having a hope for our future and also having a hope for the world around us because when we have hope for our future and we know that we're here for a reason, when we have hope for the, for the world around us, knowing that we can bring change where change needed, then we can go on to transform the world around us. That doesn't mean we can change everything because there are some things that we can't change, but it does mean that each of us can play a part in making a difference to the world around us. That's why we're here. So let's have a look at how we can do that. In the Bible, in a book called Micah, um, we have this verse. It says, what does the Lord require of you 
but do justice, love kindness and walk humbly with your God. And it's just a perfect way of summing up how we can make a difference in this world. Now, do justice. That's where we stand up for things that aren't right or aren't fair. Love kindness. We've talked a lot about that and we've encouraged you throughout this art curriculum to be doing acts of random kindness at home and school and in your community. But it's really important. It makes a massive difference to the world around us. And then walking humbly, and that is really loving others, honouring and valuing others, putting their needs above your own needs, and not thinking of yourself too highly, also not hating yourself. It's just knowing that you have gifts, that you have talents, that you can bring to make a big difference to the world around you. So we're going to have a little look at what it means to bring justice to the world around us. So here we have pictures that are taken many years apart, but people here are protesting because they are standing up for black and white people being equal. And they, this was taken many years ago, this was taken very recently because there have been things in the news that you might well have seen where there has been injustice against black people being treated differently to white people and people are standing up saying no that's not right and we're going to do something about it. This is Greta Thunberg, I talked about her a couple of weeks ago but she she's standing up for us treating the world fairly and in a just and right way and she's saying actually the way that we're polluting the world is wrong and it's unjust and the ripple effect of her standing up has been that many many people are taking it very seriously and there are many other people that are standing up for that. Here we have a picture of a country called Africa um, after a famine where they haven't had enough food and there are many people in other countries who don't have the same access to clean water, to food, to housing, to money that we do. And actually there are many people that are standing up for that injustice. There are many thing, um, organizations called NGOs, non-governmental organizations and churches and many other people that go out and seek to make a difference in those countries and bring justice so that they have access to the things that they should do. Now, Edmund Burke said, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. And what he's saying is, is, if we see things that aren't right and we do nothing, then those evil things and those bad things grow and they don't stop. But as people, we need to be standing up and fighting for justice so that these things don't grow. Okay. Making a difference by loving kindness. Now, there's a church in Bedford that have um, started up a project, and I love it, it's called a tsunami of love. And a tsunami is a massive tidal wave. And when it comes in, it changes everything. It, it changes the landscape of everything that it hits. And um, the type of tsunami that they're talking about is a tsunami of love that a great big tidal wave of love and kindness that when it hits the world around it, it changes it positively. And it says a wave of kindness will change the world. And what happens is you can get these tokens and you do an act of random kindness and you pass someone the token with it. And then they can go on to pass on that kindness to, a, to somebody else. So the tokens get passed on and it's like a ripple effect and a wave that goes out of kindness that affects many people because it keeps going on and on. And they say that Jesus was the one that started the greatest tsunami of love when he came to the world. And we love each other because he loved us first. So as a church, they're wanting that love and kindness that started with Jesus to go on and affect the world. And we can do that too. We've talked about it. We've given you loads of ideas. But in a world where you can do anything 
be kind. Remember, it's always a choice to be kind and it's something that each of us can do. So we might do a massive thing of kindness or a little thing of kindness, but whenever we choose kindness, it makes a difference in the, to the world around us. So we've looked at doing justice and about bringing kindness. And I would like to introduce you now to somebody who really has shown to me what it's like to walk humbly. Not only does he walk humbly at home by putting others before himself and loving and honouring other people well, but he also has done that in what he's chosen to do with his life. So welcome, lovely Mr Jarvis. Hello, Mr Jarvis. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me join your lesson today. It's really good to be with you. And the reason that I've invited Mr Jarvis into this lesson is because something happened to him when he was very young that really hit home and then he wanted to make a change because of it. So, Mr Jarvis, can you tell us what happened? Yes, I was about eight or nine years old. Uh, the year was 1984, so it was a very long time ago. Um, and we just got a colour television at home. And what we saw on the TV, on the news, were very shocking images of a famine in a country called Ethiopia in Africa. And a famine is where there's a great shortage of food. And in this particular famine, there were many, many people dying, men and women and children and babies who were dying of starvation. And it was there right there on our TV screens. And I remember being so shocked at the injustice. It just didn't seem right that I could be at home warm and comfortable and with as much food and water as I wanted. And yet there were other people living in such terrible conditions. It just seemed so unjust. Mm. So what did you do? What did you try and do to bring some kind of change to the situation? When I was much younger, I think I, I mainly did fundraising. So I decided I wanted to raise money for um, charities and organisations that that would try and make a difference and try to help people in those kind of situations where there was greatest need. And then as I got older, I decided I wanted to train in areas that would help me make a difference as well. Mm. So what's that look like then? So what it means now um, mm. is I work uh, for a charity, uh, which is a, a group of churches around the world and we try and uh, bring a positive change to people's lives in a number of ways and that can range from uh, emergency relief work so for example a few years ago there was an earthquake in a country called yeah. Nepal in Asia where many people actually died um, but hundreds of thousands of people were made homeless and what we tried to do was help people rebuild their homes and provide them with um, with the resources to set up small businesses so they could make money to buy themselves food and then uh, a longer term thing that we did, um, which uh, in India is a farming project where we help farmers and work with farmers to make positive changes in what they do so they can grow more and more crops and more healthy crops so they can raise more money and pay for things like sending their children to school, paying for medical bills and improving, um, improving their lives that way. Wow, so that was a big impact at that young age for you? It was. I think seeing those images just made me realise the level of injustice that there can be in the world. And, and actually what I've learned is that one small change can still make a difference in someone's life. There was a, a lady called Mother Teresa who worked in Calcutta, which was a city in India where there were many, many poor people. Mm -hmm. And she did lots of work um, supporting people who were living in very difficult conditions, thousands of people. And the, a reporter from a news station once asked her, he said, how is it you can make such a difference? How, what do you do? And she said, you love the person in front of you. You just start with one and it goes from there. Wow, that's fantastic. So helpful. Thank you for Mr. Jarvis for coming in. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> bye bye. Super. Isn't he great? You can see why he's my favourite. So. Um, we've heard here about how um, Mr Jarvis and the work that he does makes a big difference. Um, but you know, whatever we do, wherever we are, we can make a difference by loving the one in front, just like Mother Teresa said. And we can be a megaphone of hope and love to the world. We can be the change that we want to see happening around. So when we do see things that aren't right or are unjust, then we can do something about it. And that might be something like 
standing up for someone who's being mistreated. It could be even sharing out your sweets equally to make it fair. Or it can be really big things like um, Mr Jarvis was talking about earlier. But we are here for a reason. We are here for a purpose. We are here and we can make a change and we can make a difference. So I'm gonna encourage you to be amazing, to make good choices, to think about the things that we've been learning during this curriculum, to use the tools that we've given you in your tool belt of life to bring change on the inside and change on the outside. You are all kinds of amazing. There are some activities that you can look up to dive in even deeper if you want to. But I have loved doing this with you. I think you're amazing. And um, go out and make a difference in the world. That was what you're born to do. Thank <laughs> you.